Hey now, and welcome to Population Geography Part 2. In this video, we're going to see this key question, which asks, why do populations rise or fall in certain places? Take a look at this graph. You can see the more developed regions of the world, like the United States or Western Europe, Japan, places like those, you're seeing very low, if any, growth going into the future. And then you see the less developed regions of the world, and you can tell that's where the vast amount of growth has occurred and will continue to occur into the future. And now for something completely different. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some important terms, such as natality rate, which is also known as the crude birth rate, or CBR for short. This is the number of live births in a year per 1,000 people. And what you will notice with a lot of these different rates and measures is that you can see where you have the more developed countries, where their measures will be relatively consistent, the same thing on the other side of the coin with the less developed regions of the world. So we can look at mortality rate, which is also called the crude death rate, or CDR for short, which is the number of deaths in a year per 1,000 people, and you see largely the same story. So if I go back to natality rate, or mortality rate, you do see that they are both relatively high in the same places. There's also the rate of natural increase, which is called the RNI, which is essentially your CBR minus your CDR. This map shows you the natural increase rate as a percentage, so you can see places where there are low growth rates, and also where there are high growth rates. Another telling indicator is the total fertility rate, or TFR. This is reported as the average number of children born to a woman in her childbearing years, which in conventional terms is usually between 15 and 49 years of age. Idealistically, if the average woman had two children, she would perfectly replace the current population in which she resides, since it takes two to tango. It takes a man and a woman to have a baby. Now, since some infants and children die before they procreate themselves, a TFR of 2.0 would not be sufficient. So, we use the somewhat symbolic number of 2.1 to illustrate replacement level. The 0.1 indicates the need of slightly more than 2 to maintain a stationary population level. So, aside from considering immigration, any country with a TFR of below 2.1 would have a declining population, and any country with a TFR above 2.1 would have a growing population. And so we will look at some population theories that have also led to certain population policies. And one of the overarching questions we look at is why do people go hungry? One of the most famous theories was proposed by Thomas Malthus back in the 1790s. He contended that food increased arithmetically or linearly. However, human reproduction increased geometrically or exponentially. So according to Malthus, population growth was the culprit as to why people went hungry. And despite natural checks on the population, such as famines, epidemics, or so on, overpopulation would persist. Now, like most theories, it's not perfect. It is flawed. For one reason, we have increased agriculture at a faster rate, such as through the Industrial Revolution and through the Third Agricultural Revolution. And over time, there actually has been a decline in growth rates as people have gotten more and more wealthy. And as humans, we are able to move. So through colonization and migration, you can move away from a place that is relatively food poor to a place that is relatively food rich. Or a place without jobs to a place with jobs. However, he gained notoriety, especially in the 1960s, when Paul Ehrlich wrote The Population Bomb. In the 1960s, the Earth was going through a period of relatively cooler temperatures, and so there was less food per person, and the growth rates were about an all-time high at that point. However, since then, the Earth has warmed up slightly, the world growth rates have declined, and more food has been produced through the Green Revolution. Now, also in the 1960s were the theories of one Esther Bozerup. Now, when we look at her theories, they are basically Malthus in reverse. So according to Bozerup, the increase in population growth would not be due to the increase in food production, like Malthus had contended. But rather, the increase in population growth would result in a greater demand for food, resulting in an intensification of agricultural production. So, going back to the idea that necessity is the mother of all invention, she contended that the food supply would vary, but would never reach the carrying capacity. Now, carrying capacity refers to how many people, in this case, can survive in a given piece of land. So, according to Malthus, the immovable object was food production that would stay linear. But according to Bozerup, 
the immovable object is human reproduction that would continue to increase. Now, one of the reasons why her theories are flawed is because we certainly know that growth rates have not continued to increase exponentially, but also because as you have more intensification of agricultural production on the land, you have a depletion of the nutrients at a larger rate. It's what David Ricardo referred to as diminishing returns, which means the return on your investment is diminished over time as you continually intensify the planting of crops on the same piece of land. And then there was the cornucopian theory, which was somewhat based on The Ultimate Resource, a 1981 book written by Julian Lincoln Simon. The basic premise of this theory is there is no resource crisis, and there is an abundance with regard to food, fuel, etc. As a particular resource becomes more scarce, its price rises. This rise of price creates an incentive for people to discover more of the resource, ration it, or eventually develop substitutes. There are also humanitarian incentives in wanting to help those in need and for those who are less fortunate. The problem isn't that there aren't enough resources, it's a matter of adequate distribution. The populations in the rich countries have plenty. The ones in the poorer countries have a deficit with respect to needed resources to thrive, and in many cases, to survive. Therefore, the ultimate resource is not any particular physical object, but the capacity for humans to invent and adapt. So why do you think people go hungry? Is it a lack of food, overpopulation, a lack of adequate distribution, or something else? Which also brings me to another question. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? A good question. Let's find out. One, two, three, three. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. <laughs>